Hi, everyone. And uh, as Ali mentioned, because of uh, coronavirus in China, so um, the officers unfortunately cannot be here. So I will help them introduce their interesting work and by reading out the slides script. And so apologize if I sound like a robot. And so this work is titled um, MapX and Controlled Data Migration in the Expansion of Decentralized Object-Based Storage Systems. And this is joint work of Li Wang from Didi and Yi Min Zhang from NiceX and Jia Wei Xu and um, Guan Tao um, Guan Tao Xu, Xu from um, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. And Li Wang and Yi Min are the uh, joint primary authors. So to start with the background, object-based storage systems have been widely used for various scenarios, such as distributed file storage and remote block storage and block storage, et cetera. And compared to file system-based storage, object-based storage system simplify the data layouts by exposing an interface for reading and writing objects via unique object names, and thus reduce the management complexity at the um, back end. So objects are um, placed among a large number of object storage devices, um, termed OSDs, and following centralized or decentralized placement methods. And centralized methods use a central directory to record object positions, and this directory avoids direct mapping from um, uh, um, objects to device, and thus is more flexible for migration control during the expansion. However, uh, the directory introduced metadata retrieval um, stage, and that is slow. And in contrast, decentralized placement methods uniformly distribute objects among the OSDs without relying on a central directory, and usually outperforms the centralized methods in I.O. performance, and because of their clients could directly access the objects by calculating the responsible um, OSDs. However, as we will see, the decentralized methods cause severe data migration in the cluster expansions. So in CRASH, the storage cluster is modeled as a logical map, and this figure shows an example of a four-layer, uh, four-level hierarchical map, and where the entire cluster, the root, is composed of rows, and the rows represent the groups of racks, and which is composed of cabinets, and which represent the racks, and which are filled with shelves, and these shelves represent these um, storage machines. And each, our, uh, each machine is installed with many OSDs and um, just uh, the disks. So the crash algorithm will um, support flexible construct, uh, constraints for reliable replica placements by first encoding the information of failure domains like um, shared power source or network into the cluster map. And second, letting the administrator define the placement rules that specify how the replicas are placed by recursively selecting the bucket items. So um, Crash performs um, two steps mapping from the objects to their storage OSDs. And so first, the objects are um, ca categorized into um, page groups and um, terms the PGs by computing the module of the hashing of object names, um, i.e. the PGID equals hash of name modular the PG number. Um, second, the PGs are mapped from uh, N OSDs following the crash algorithms, and for example, M equals three, representing the three-way replication. So statistically, the number of objects stored on an OSD is, is linearly related to the OSD's weight, and which could by, um, be assigned by the system in, uh, administrators. So this uh, slide demonstrates this two-stage mapping. And so as we can see, first from the um, objects to the um, PGs, um, and then from the PGs to the OSDs. And due to the lack of time, we're not digging into the detail of the original crash algorithms, and which could be found in the paper. So a critical drawback of the crash algorithm is the uncontrolled data migration in the cluster expan expansion. So as we can see from this slide, um, when we add three OSDs, um, the crash algorithms will force us to move some PGs, and in, um, including the, their object into the newly added OSDs, and in order to achieve immediate load balancing after the expansion. And so this is unnecessary data migration, and because as time goes by, new objects uh, actually can eventually be uh, evenly distributed at all these six OSDs. Um, 
So um, to, uh, to summarize, although Crash achieves statistical load balancing and without a central directory and, and could automatically rebalance the load when the storage cluster maps changes, it also has this downside that can cause uncontroll uncontrollable data migrations in the cluster expansion. And the amount of migration that can be as high as H times delta um, W divided by um, W, where the H is the number of the levels in the hierarchy, and the delta W and the W are the increased weight of the expansion and the total weight of all the OSDs, respectively. So now let's talk about the um, map hex designs. And so the cross-placement algorithms suffer from data migration after each cluster expansion because it in, in, essentially it crashes the differences between the new and old objects or OSDs. And as discussed before, storage systems usually prefer to avoid data migration after the cluster expansions, even at the cost of temporarily load imbalance. And for instance, the Haystack and HDFS leverage a central directory to keep existing objects unaffected during the cluster expansion. And as new objects are stored onto the new OSDs, the available cap capacity of them decreases over time, and thus eventually the entire system will achieve approximate load balancing. And the data migration can be performed um, with some metadata modifications at any time as needed. And so this slide um, shows a better way to, to elaborate this. And so in the old OSDs, um, this, they store the old objects. And while the cluster expand, um, after the cluster expansion, the new OSDs store the new objects. And here, there's no data migration after the expansion. So our goal is to achieve this controlled data migration for, data, uh, for cluster expansions and so to achieve this, we design MapX on top of Crash by introducing an extra time dimension mapping um, to distinguish the new and the old objects or OSDs while still preserving the benefits of randomness and uniformness of the original Crash algorithm. And so this figure um, shows an example of um, two expansion of uh, uh, two extension to the uh, of two expansion of the original cluster, and which consists of n cabinets, and each have two shelves. And the first expansion add a shelf um, represented represented by this red um, re rectangles, and to each of the n cabinets. And the second expansion adds m cabinets represented by these blue rectangles. So unlike Crash, which um, mon monolithically update the cluster map, um, the MapX will view each expansion as well as the original cluster as a separate layer, and which con contains not only the new leaf, uh, leaf OSDs, but also all the internal buckets and the shelf, the cabinets, et cetera, and from the OSDs up to the root. Then these old um, PGs um, to the old layers, and then the new PGs to the new layers. So as shown in this figure, and to support this uh, new time dimension mapping with minimum modification to crash, and we insert a virtual um, level beneath the common crash root, and uh, where the, each virtual node represents a layer of expansion. And for example, in the last slide where we add um, two layers, one red and the other blue, as shown in this figure, they are added beneath the root as two layers. And this virtual layer enables MapX to realize migration-free expansion by mapping the new objects to the new layer before further processing of the crash algorithm. And since this new layer will not affect the weights of the old ones, and the placement of the old objects within the old layer will not change. So in each expansion, the new layer is assigned with a certain number of newly created empty PGs, each having a timestamp um, T, uh, T uh, PGs equal to the layer's expansion time. And when writing or reading an object O with a creation timestamp TO, uh, we first compute the time, uh, compute the ID, i.e. the PG ID of the O's PG by um, this formula shown in the slide where the TO um, um, are maintained as high-level metadata. 
So note that although the PGs might be remapped to other layers, for example, um, in the uh, load balancing, rebalancing, um, as we will discuss later, and the init PG number is layers constant, and that's mapping from the objects to the PGs is immutable. So consequently, each object is mapped to a um, responsible PG during creation, and which has the la latest timestamp TPG is um, smaller or equals to TO among all the PG. So similar to Crash, MapX map a PG onto a list of OSDs following a sequence of operation in a user-defined placement rule. So as shown in this figure, the MapX um, implicitly adds a select operation, and so they select one layer and to the placement um, rule in order to realize this time dimension mapping from PGs to layers without disturbing the administrators. So internally, MapX extends the crash original select operations to support this, um, the layer type of select. And we will not discuss the details uh, on the algorithm due to lack of time, and which could be found in the paper. So in practice, each expansion should be able to independently satisfy the F-way replication policy, and thus the PGs could be mapped to a list of OSDs in one layer. So also as illustrated in this figure, the MapX supports to control object data migration by dynamically um, mapping the PGs. And each PG has um, two timestamps, namely a static timestamp um, TPGs, and that is equal to the expansion time of the PG's initial layer. And um, a dynamic timestamp TPGD um, that could be set to any layer's expansion time. So different from the mapping from objects to PGs which use static timestamps, the mapping from PGs to layers is performed by comparing the PG's dynamic timestamp to the layer's timestamps. And consequently, a PG can be easily remapped to any layer by manipulating the dynamic timestamp, and which could be, will be notified to all OSDs and the clients by incremental map updates. So MapX also supports cluster shrinking and layer merging. And when the load of a layer becomes lower than a threshold, MapX shrinks the cluster by removing the layers um, from the cluster and as an inverse operation of the cluster expansion. So given a layer W to be um, removed from the cluster, we first um, assign all the PGs in W to the um, remaining layers according to their aggregated weights, and, the, um, and then migrate these PGs to the target layers through remapping. And after shrinking the layer, W is, is logically preserved and its init PG number will not change and to avoid affecting the mapping from objects to PGs. And MapX balances the load of two layers by layer merging, and which could be easily realized by setting the expansion time of one layer to the same as um, um, that of the other. So now uh, let's talk about the evaluation. Um, so first, uh, we have implemented the metadata-based timestamp retrieval mechanism for um, Ceph RBD, the Rados um, blocks uh, device. And this Ceph stores the metadata, such as the prefix of the data object names, the information of the volumes, and snapshot uh, um, striping, et cetera, of an um, RBD in the RBD header structure, and which will be retrieved when a client mounts the RBD by um, RBD open. And since an object of an RBD could be created after any expansion, um, we inherit the timestamps of the current layer, and which an object is created when an object is created at the object's timestamp. And therefore, we add a per object index named object um, timestamp um, to the RBD header structure, which points to each layer's expansion time. So for evaluation, we compare the I.O. performance of MapX and Crash during the expansions and respectively um, being used at the object placement methods for SEP. And so in the experiment, we use almost all the default values of all the parameters of um, SEP. And so this figure showed that the evaluation result for the 99th percentile tail latency 
and MapX outperforms Crash by up to 4.25 times, and na namely, uh, mainly because the migration in Crash severely contends with the normal I.O. requests. So this figure shows the evaluation result for the IOPS um, respectively for in uh, MapX and Crash. And similar to the latency results, um, MapX significantly outperformed Crash um, by up to 74.3% um, in the IOPS test. And because Crash's data migration can tend to be not with the normal I.O. request. So we also compare the computation time of MapX and Crash by simulating a SF cluster um, of different number of OSDs and varying from 600 to um, 9,200. And this result show that both MapX and Crash can map an object to an OSD in tens of uh, microseconds. And the small extra time of MapX compared to the crash come from the computation of the time dimension mapping beneath the root. So to conclude, um, the contention between decentralized and centralized data placement, um, uh, placement methods has been long lived in the design of large scale object storage systems. And the decentralized crash methods achieve high scalability, robustness, and performance, and, but, they, but it suffers from uncontrollable data migration in cluster expansion. And we present to MapX and a, a novel extension to Crash that embraces the um, best of both decentralized and centralized methods. And MapX controls the data migration by introducing an extra time dimension mapping from object creation time to the cluster expansion times while still preserving the randomness and uniformness of Crash. And that's all. Thank you for listening. And please visit uh, nicexlabs.com for more interesting research projects. Thank you.